So one sort of example to try to, to, to explain thermodynamics, which is a big word which makes most people glaze over, is, is some, an analogy of, of say, fourth graders and, uh, and hula hoops. So if we consider the gadolinium ions as, as, as fourth graders, and we give them a bunch of hula hoops, uh, which fourth graders tend to like, uh, as, as the ligand, as the, as the chelator, then all the fourth graders are going to grab a hula hoop. And that's what we've shown here, where almost, if we've got, you know, uh, thousands and thousands and millions and billions of, of uh, fourth graders and, and hula hoops, they're all paired up together. Uh, but you always have, you know, one, one in 10 kid, to the 18th. One in 10 to the 18 <laughs> kids who doesn't like the hula hoop. And okay. so, so we've got a, 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 an empty circle here. Uh, shown here, which and and a, and a gadolinium removed from that. So that's thermodynamics. It's a very large stability constant. And then um, if we have a lower stability constant, so some something that maybe ten to the fifteen, then we might have uh, still most of the kids have hula hoops, but maybe they don't like red ones as much. And so we have two two kids that don't have a red hula hoop. So this is a difference between uh, thermodynamics for, for for two given contrast agents. Now what happens? when the system is perturbed. So let's say we've got uh, some second graders come in, and uh, we call them zinc, and they want, um, they want to take some hula hoops as well. Well, they can come in and they can grab this empty hula hoop, but they're, they're smaller kids, and they're not going to be able to wrestle the hula hoops away from the fourth graders. So, um, so there will be a slight change, but, but not very much. And, that's what, and so thermodynamics tells us the outcome of, of this happens. When, when the second graders come in, the fourth graders are there. At the end of the day, uh, where are the hula hoops going to settle? Okay, that's thermodynamics. Doesn't tell us anything about how fast this process occurs. Now, uh, we can also get competition from a stronger reliable, like uh, sixth graders can come in and they can just grab those hula hoops away from the fourth graders. And thermodynamics, the, these binding constants of zinc for the chelator, for gadolinium for the chelator, this will tell us the end product of what's going to happen. So if zinc were strong, we call it, it would be like the sixth graders coming in and pushing the gadolinium out of the chelator, the hula hoop. But uh, something like copper you mentioned might be weaker, and so it might be more like a second grader and not push them out. And so the thermodynamics really just sort of talks about, uh, you know, you come back a year later and where are the, where are the hula hoops, if you will, and the, and, the, and the kids. Exactly. So having a very high stability constant, you know, essentially making the kids bigger, uh, then that's a good thing, right? So Got it. So at the end stage, it's not, it's not going to change. Uh, but the other, the other way we can make things uh, more secure is, is to make this process slower. And so uh, this can be a very fast process, as, as we've shown here. Uh, and this is important. When you think about it, you inject this, the compound is going to be excreted. So how, even if thermodynamically uh, there could be some gadolinium released, will this even occur on the time scale at which the, the molecule is being excreted? And so if it's a very fast process, that could be yes. But if it's a slow process, uh, even though thermodynamics tells us that there could be some gadolinium release, if all of the, the contrast agent is excreted, before that happens, well, it, it's, it's irrelevant. It's a moot point. Now, um, and this comes back to, to NSF and, and why uh, we see this in, in patients with, uh, with impaired uh, renal function.